untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Blue Green Merfolk, also known as Tropical Merfolk, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And it's been over a year since we last covered the Merfolk tribe in Historic, so the deck got a ton of new upgrades over time, including Collected Company at 4 mana, a great payoff card for any green creature deck. Then the Merfolk tribe known for having lots of lords that pump up the team. So at 2 mana we've got Merfolk Mistbinder, a 2-2 Merfolk, giving other Merfolk we control plus one plus one. A recent addition from Jumpstart Historic Horizons is Master of the Pearl Trident, another 2-2 giving our team plus one plus one, as well as Island Walk, so great against any opposing blue decks, making our entire team unblockable. And at 3 mana we've got a Marrow Reachery, another 2-2 giving our team plus 1 plus 1, and whenever we cast a Merfolk spell, we may tap or untap target permanent. So great for getting blockers out of the way, but we can also untap our own lands to quickly deploy the rest of our hand. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Kumena Speaker, a 1-1 one -one that gets plus 1 plus 1 as long as we control another Merfolk or Island, which is almost always the case, it's a nice 1 mana 2-2. Two -two. Then we've got Shoreline Scout from Jumpstart, a 1-1 one -one that when it enters a battlefield we may exile a Merfolk or land card from our hand, and if we do we conjure a card named Tropical Island into our hand, which is a nice original blue-green dual land. And as long as another Merfolk or Island entered the battlefield under our control this turn, the Shoreline Scout gets plus one plus so, so it can hit for two. And then we also have two copies of Merfolk Windrobber, just a 1-1 one -one flyer, the mill ability not super relevant in this deck. Then at two mana, besides our lords, we also have two copies of Merfolk Trickster, 2-2 two -two with flash, we can play Dance and Speed, and when it enters we can tap target creature and opponent controls, and it loses all abilities until end of turn, so lots of neat things we can do with it, as well as a full playset of Silvergill Adept, a 2-1, that as an additional cost we have to reveal a Merfolk from our hand or pay three mana, and when it enters we get to draw a card, so a great cantripping Merfolk. And then at 3 mana, besides Reachery, we've got two copies of the Merfolk God from Jumpstart, a 3-4 that has Indestructible as long as we control at least two Author Merfolk, and when the God attacks we get to draw a card, and Author Merfolk we control have a Ward 1, so we get to counter any abilities or spells that target our Merfolk, unless the opponent pays one additional mana. And then we still have two copies of Kumena, Tyrant of Raska, the 2-4 legendary Merfolk that can let us tap another Merfolk to make Kumena unblockable. We can tap three untapped Merfolk to draw a card, or we can tap five untapped Merfolk to put a plus one plus one counter on each Merfolk we control, which is another great ability to take over stalled boards. As you may have noticed, we have fewer plus one plus one counter synergies in this Merfolk deck as opposed to previous iterations, as we no longer have Panthic Biomancer at one mana, and we also lost the Deep Root Elite at two since we have more lords that immediately pump the team instead. And then we also get to play with two copies of Glasspool Mimic, which we can play as a tap land, or as a creature that enters as a copy of another creature we control, so we can potentially copy another one of our lords to give it a team plus one plus one, and it's another creature we can hit with Collected Company, although do keep in mind that if we have an empty board, Glasspool Mimic wouldn't be able to copy the other creature we find, so it has to copy something that's already in play, but of course Company another great powerhouse in any green creature deck in Historic, and it's no difference here. And then the mana base is very consistent with plenty of untapped dual lands, including four copies of Botanical Sanctum, four Breeding Pool, and four copies of Unclaimed Territory naming Merfolk. Then we also have two Hinterland Harbor, which comes into play untapped as long as we control an island, which is easily the case with four Breeding Pool and eight basic islands, as well as the tropical islands we can generate with the Shoreline Scout, so there's usually no mana issues. And then if we were playing best of three, there's tons of useful sideboard cards we can include, such as Spell Pierce, a nice one mana counter spell, to potentially counter any sweepers that could be quite effective against our strategy. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one, probably go with the Shoreline Scouts, and then we can upgrade a Breeding Pool into a Tropical Islands. Save us two damage. Opponent Mono Black into an Elder Fang Disciple. Probably say goodbye to the Wind Robber. Try and hang on to Collected Company and uh, Silvergill a great draw. Not really interested in trading.
pretty likely that we hit one of our lords with company and we can pump the scout to survive a disciple block. Opponent passes. So now it's probably fine to trickster tapping the disciple. And we could see removal on Silvergill, maybe. And then we face an interesting decision whether we want a main phase company to maybe get in more damage or play around a sweeper by playing at end of turn. Think I'm okay attacking with a team. See how they block and then just fire off the company, which is most likely going to hit a Lord to pump our toughness by one. And we hit definitely Reachery and then I guess Master of the Pearl Trident over Mistbinder. On the off chance they have an island in their deck. I expect removal on one of my two lords, but we'll still kill the disciple at least. Grasp of Darkness will do. Snarl coming into play tapped. It's only three mana to work with here. Playcrafter. We'll sag the scouts. And a misbinder should give us lethal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Probably hang on to Glasspool Mimic as a creature and just curve misbinder into reachery into more goodies. Alright, let's go with the turn to Silver Gill instead. And then I'm most likely gonna play Reachery, so we'll reveal that first. Hide a bit more information for the future. And then turn 4, hopefully we can double 2-drop. With Reachery we can also untap our lands to make that easier. Against blue reds, we could also go with a slightly different path where we maybe glass pool mimic, copy the silver gill, draw more cards, get head on card advantage. Could also play mimic tapped, play mistbinder or silver gill with a plan of casting company next turn to get ahead. So definitely a lot of options. I do expect my regery to die if I play it, so we wouldn't be able to leverage the untap ability all that much. So if that's the case. I think I want to play it safe and make sure I can play company next turn. So we'll play another Silver Gill over Mistbinder, which is going to be better once we have a bigger board. And hit for two. And then, yeah, double company back to back should be pretty effective. Opponent with an expressive iteration. So they're playing some sort of blue red spells or Arc Light Phoenix deck. They have an island, so if we find Master of the Pearl Tridents, Island Walk will be quite relevant. Just gonna see an opt this turn. We only have one green source, so I can't double Mistbinder here. But I'm probably just gonna main phase company in the hopes of hitting some lords. All right, so not the most exciting hit. Probably go for, hmm, could go for Shoreline Scout to ensure land five and then Mimic copying Silver Gills, not bad. So I want to draw first. All right, we picked up a land, so I guess territory can become Tropical Island, that's fine. And hit for four. So not the most exciting company, but still pretty good. And then next turn we could go Rejury 
into Mistbinder and then tap or untap something. Or we can fire off another company. Storming Entity. We can tap down. So, one mana left. If they have a shock, they can maybe still survive. So, play Mistbinder. Tapping doesn't matter too much here, Sprite Dragon. Could also tap the land to force them to cast whatever trick they have. So let's assume they have removal, although now that this resolved, a shock is not enough to kill one of my lords. So I think we're probably fine to smash. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's fine. Turn one, Wind Robber. Turn two, Trickster. Rejury re Company, hopefully. Alright, let's go with the Lord instead. And see what the opponent is up to. Dranith Magistrates. Some four color deck. Davriel's Withering taking care of our master. So it could be a combo deck with Withering and Vesper Lark. For now, I guess I like the Regery. So next turn we can play Silvergill, untap land, play Trickster, even if we don't pick up a land for company. Wall of Blossoms. This deck is also giving me some um, Vanifar vibes. So we could company. Or we could double two drop and tap some creatures down. Kind of like the double two drop line too here. And then I guess I can tap a creature. And Master seems pretty good here. Tap Savior. And Smash. Could have also untapped my land if the plan was to then play Trickster and tap two creatures, one with the Trickster's ability, one with a Reachery to save myself two damage from Breeding Pool. Opponent's gonna main face company. Right, finds a deputy of detention for interaction. Opponent doesn't have any actual islands, just glacial fortress for blue mana. So we didn't have active island walk. Now I can Kumena speaker, untap my land and still company. And then we'll main phase the company. So we can evaluate whether or not we want to make a big attack or not. Right, not the most exciting company hits, but at least we got rid of a bunch of lands. So just sending the flyer. And next turn the trickster can still set up a pretty big attack. Another company from the opponents. Finds Vesper Lark. And another deputy. Can get rid of both my wind robbers. Not enough cards in their graveyard to sacrifice it. Yeah, this uh, game has taken a turn. Our opponent's company hits have been a little bit better than ours so far. Reachery does give hope. So Reachery... Untap my breeding pool. And then Trickster can tap three creatures down total, one of which 
will be Wall of Blossoms. One of which will be Charming Prince. And one of which... I guess we could time the Savior too. Otherwise I can do the Chump plus Sacrifice. So yeah, we'll tap the Vesper Lark and the Savior then. And using the Trickster on the Savior to remove its ability is also quite relevant. And send the team. Seems fine. Opponent takes eight, we get our master back. And our opponent does have a watery grave, so Island Walk is now relevant. But let's see if they can somehow combo off here. They cannot. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. Got a 1, 2, 3 curve. Probably gonna play our Merfolk God on 3 overreachery so we can start drawing sooner. Turn on Pelt Collector. So some sort of Gruul aggro deck most likely. And uh, yeah, we'll play out our Mistbinder. And Gruul confirmed. Another Pelt Collector. Alright, so no stomp on Mistbinder. And now that we get to play our God or potentially Reachery, it will be out of stomp range. So I think I like playing Reachery over the God, just so we can, uh, again, keep our Lords out of stomp range. And then next turn that also allows me to potentially double spell by untapping my land. Spellbreaker is fine. Can tap it down with the Trickster. And yeah, our opponent's in trouble here. I have a lot of options, but this seems fine, Miss Binder. Untap my land. And then Trickster. Tap Belt Collector. Tap Spellbreaker and smash. Opponent's forced to chum block. And they decide to just take it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Scouts making a tropical island. Still have to decide what to exile for it. Turn one, Blossoming Sands. All right, so the only card we cannot exile with our scout is a Glass Pool Mimic. So probably get rid of one of my two mana lords. So I can curve two drop into a bunch of threes. And I guess uh, Master of Pearl Trident is slightly better than uh, Mistbinder here. If we had an extra 2 drop, there's an argument for keeping the extra 2 mana lord so we can go turn 2 2 drop and then turn 4 double 2 drop. Alright, so opponent's on a green white angels deck. So, don't have a great attack here, sadly. But we did pick up another untapped land, so we can potentially go off with Rejury, or we can get the uh, Murfolk God in play to start drawing cards. Against Angels, it's just about who can get the most power and toughness in play as quickly as possible. Opponent gets to gain some life, although at least no Angels in sight. Kumino Speaker is also interesting. So, yeah, I think this turn it's probably still Rejury with a plan of next turn maybe copying it with a Mimic. And then still no good attacks. Opponent has their own company. Let's see what they hit. Hopefully no Resplendent Angel. 
That's a uh, double resplendent angel right there. This is going to be difficult to beat, if not impossible. So best I can do is probably mimic copying Reachery. Name Merfolk. Play Speaker. And then I could untap two lands to play Mistbinder. And then I can tap two creatures, which would then be the two angel tokens, presumably. And attack. Opponent takes it. Not even blocking with Daxos, that's how confident they are. A righteous Valkyrie to pump the team, which will make more angels with Respondent Angel. Yeah, Respondent Angel is pretty hard to beat once they get it going with Bishop. And that's game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Missing a one drop, but being on the play should make up for it. And then we'll hang on to Master, which should be slightly better than Mistbinder. Although it doesn't look like our opponent's playing blue. Turn to Explore, into Untamed Godless Shrine, and a Thirst to take care of our Mistbinder. Yeah, I think it's still Regery, although playing Silvergill makes it more likely we can play Company next turn. Although then again, if we draw land, we can still double spell two drops next turn, which is fine. Even if the Regery dies, otherwise we can untap our lands as well. Mindstone into Nightmare. It's pretty rough if they can snipe Company. Luckily, we hit a land. So, in response to the second chapter... We'll have to company and hit some goodies. Kind of like drawing card and then probably reachery over the Murpho God, although the Murpho God's pretty good too. Hmm. Maybe I don't take the reachery and just go with God plus Silvergill and hope not to draw into another company. Alright, that's fine. So nothing to take with Nightmare. And next turn we can double spell. Draw a card with our god. And make it indestructible. Although Binding's gonna take care of it before we have a second Murfolk in play. Okay. So Silvergill. Revealing scouts. And then scout can replace botanical sanctum with a tropical island. Glass pool mimic also pretty decent. Alright, hope there's no sweeper. And next turn we can add two lords to the board as well. And Garrick can make some wolves. 
Kumena's nice, although I think Double Lord's still going to be better. And then if I send all face, what happens? Opponent's forced to double chump, take nine. It seems pretty good, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. And turn one island means double Master of the Pearl Trident is looking even better. So I have to decide between turn Trickster into Tropical Island or probably Breeding Pool. Let's go with the Breeding Pool, we'll probably draw another land by turn 4. Put on blue reds and a turn to Sprite Dragon. So I don't hate going for the Trickster in the opponent's turn and wait on Master until they maybe use some removal spells first. Could also upkeep Trickster so Sprite Dragon doesn't pick up any plus one counters, which might also be okay. Like, we won't be able to ambush it because it gets plus one counters, which the Trickster can't really remove. So by doing it now, at least uh, Sprite Dragon doesn't pick up those counters to begin with. If they were planning to cast like an expressive iteration, it's gonna be a Dragon's Rage Channeler into an Opts. Surveils land into the graveyard. Channeler, definitely a powerful new addition from Jumpstart Historic Horizons. Gonna see plenty of play in the format. And a Faithless Looting pointing towards Arclanked Phoenix, potentially being in their deck as well. And yep, there we see Arclanked go to the graveyard. Channeler now a 3 3. So I only have. A good attack if I play one of my lords, especially master, would be relevant. But given that we have four mana next turn, we can double two. So this turn we have to decide between Rejury or our Merfolk God, which can also protect the rest of our team somewhat, but it does mean no attacks this turn. I think it's worth it to set up our protection here. And then next turn have a better turn. There's the expressive iteration we were talking about. Yeah, if we can drop a double Master of the Pearl Trident next turn, we might still be able to win the race. And with the protection in place, it's a lot more difficult for the opponent to take out our creatures one by one. Stormwing Entity. So we are facing quite a bit of damage. At least they can get the Arclanked Phoenix back this turn. So, yeah, we'll go double master. And next turn, Reach Rain to Scout can also tap a creature down if needed. So let's see if they can deal 14. It's definitely within the cards. They have 8 on the board. If they get Phoenix back and put a few counters on Dora to enable prowess, could easily be dead. Lightning Axe going to the graveyard is bad news. Most likely means we're dead. And there's an Opts. So taking 12 on the board, but I'm sure they have another 1 mana spell they can cast to get back Phoenix and get some more triggers going. And there it is. Alright, so close game. Difference between being in the plane on the draw can also be felt in matchups like these where 
It's all about being as fast as possible. And a shock to the face to close out the game. Alright, GG's. The Chowder actually losing flying because the Phoenix entered the battlefield. Another interesting interaction. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. And then turn one probably looking at shoreline scouts. And I think it's going to work out better if we exile speaker, since I do want a third land. Alright, in hindsight, double one drop might have been better than master here, but I think I like master over trickster. Even though the master is unlikely to survive for long. Uh -huh, opponent on black red goblins. So gotta watch out for those munitions experts. Burn marrow regery should be good enough here. And next turn we can tap down multiple goblins between trickster and the reacher's ability. Prospector is fine. I guess they could have an expert here to deal three to one of my lords. In which case I should probably just do it now on the reachery before I get to untap anything. So... What are we thinking? I could double trickster. I could... Wind robber, untap my lands, and take it from there. Because I can play the two tricksters at instant speed to still untap stuff. Although I guess Silvergill is probably good enough. Untap my lands. And there's experts. They probably should have killed the Regery a while back. And then we can still play the Trickster and tap down one of their goblins. And probably go with the Battle Cry. Could have also kept Trickster to play in the opponent's turn to remove the Prospector's ability so they can't play any big scary goblins. But I'm okay if they double block. Alright, let's see what they can do with the Prospector here. Alright, Frexian Tower potentially represents more mana. So is this a Muxus? Looks like it. Yep. Uh, not the most exciting hits. Just a munitions expert killing my master. Is my guess. No haste on Muxus. Alright, can't quite double spell. So I can keep Trickster to tap down Muxus or prevent any other abilities. 
They could have given a Krenko Haste in their hands, which, you know, I wouldn't be able to stop with the Trickster anyway, so it's mostly blocking Muxus. Although we'll have blockers on the ground for Muxus anyway. So I think it's still Regery. And then hit for two with a Wind Robber. What happens if I attack with everyone? They block. And then I guess they would be forced to chump. Maybe that's worth it. They have to jump with Ringleader and Experts. Going for double blocks, not gonna work unless they jump with Prospector, which is fine by me. So now even Krenko isn't super scary with only one goblin in play. So they would need another Muxus pretty much. Hobgoblin Bandit Lord. With haste, I guess could do some damage if they have more goblins, but... Now they're tapped out. And our opponent packs it in, we can play Trickster, tap two goblins down, and that should give us lethal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an okay hand. We're missing some lords, but uh, Silvergill can maybe draw into one. And then we'll kick things off with Shoreline Scouts. And probably don't need a second Shoreline Scouts. Turn to Silvergill. Take things from there. Mass over the Pearl Trident also. A nice addition here. There was an argument for just going turn 2 Master, turn 3 Mimic copying the Master. But we're not sure what we're up against yet, so... If they have removal, that could turn out poorly. Turn to Sprite Dragon. Seems to be popular today. Well, tapped Mimic gives me access to company next turn, which is probably where we want to be. And then I think I hang on to Master for later for the Island Walk and just play Mistbinder for now. And we're probably looking at a main phase collected company. Turn 3 iteration. They could find a one mana removal spell for Mistbinder. If they don't, they're in trouble. It's just gonna be an opt. Uh, it's probably not gonna cut it here if our company is any good. We're one point short of lethal if we just play Master of the Pearl Trident, so I think companies to play. And I guess we're still one short. Let's go with uh, Murpho God. But now we've got built in protection, and I don't see the opponent dealing 16 damage here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, fine hands. Double Silver Gill, quite good against any more controlling strategy. And we even have a bit of protection here. Inquisition, can have a look. All our cards are good, goes for the Mistbinder. Even draw one drop, which is nice. And I would like a third land. I'm looking at this Kumena, which is probably the least likely to provide card advantage for us. If we're up against 
a deck with a lot of removal, it's just going to be difficult to keep three Merfolk in play at the same time. Alright, and then Silvergill. Playing the Sanctum does give them a little bit more info, but that's alright. Opponent Sigrixis Colors and Island Walk is going to be relevant with that island in play. So this can protect our team. And then next one we can double two drop. Memory Lapse deals with our god the first time around. Narset we probably want to take out before playing Silvergill. Which does make our sequencing a little awkward, I guess. So maybe we'll replay the god anyway. Inquisition can snipe one of our two drops. I'm guessing that's going to be the Master. So... I do want to kill Narsets all the way, I think. So the Silver Gill works again. Such violence is upsetting. And then we can just cast it for five mana. A Languish would be the worst case alongside like a Shadow's Verdict here, since that gets past the indestructible. Just to search for Ascanta. Alright, now we can play a cheaper Silver Gill. But, uh, and I think we main phase it in case we find a Lord we can play. Let's attack. Draw a card. And Trickster's not bad. So, with her opponent at 5, I don't really feel the need to add a Wind Robber to the board. Feels like we have enough in play as is. Wind Robber needs 8 cards in graveyards. So we're not guaranteed to be able to draw a card if they have a Sweeper next turn with Search for Ascanta putting an extra card in Graveyard. Yeah, let's just pass. Have a few leftovers in case of a Sweeper. Trickster we can play this in speed, so that's nice. Alright, Prismari Command targeting themselves. I guess would have enabled the Wind Robber to draw a card. But they're gonna need something pretty special to get out of this. Ascanta flips, so we don't want the game to drag on, otherwise this is gonna pull them ahead. Three mana, maybe four after Ascanta, and our opponent packs it in after finding a counter spell with Ascanta, so we got to beat a control deck as well, although luckily didn't face any sweepers, which are the main weakness of the archetype. So we get to see Tropical Merfolk in action, and the deck felt pretty good. Definitely one of the better tribal decks out there in Historic. Maybe not quite on the level of, let's say, an Elves or a Goblins, but it's getting close. Feels like maybe an extra good one-drop like Curse Catcher would give the deck a leg up in the control matchups, being able to delay those sweepers by turn can often buy us enough time, and being a creature of course very relevant when it gets pumped by all the Lords and can be found with Collected Company, as opposed to having to main deck something like Spell Pierce, which could otherwise also be quite effective. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.